What's up, Freaks fans, and welcome to another episode of the Piscino Report. It's season 2021, episode 8. This is, well, it's half a Miguel Oliveira episode. I don't know who who's number 8, but 88 is Miguel Oliveira, so we can be the Miguel episode, or we can be the Oliveira episode. You decide. <laughs> Anyway, regardless, this is the uh, the podcast slash vodcast that gets straight past the hype and gives you the lowdown of what's really happening in the MotoGP paddock. And speaking of speaking of MotoGP paddocks, the man himself is actually there at the moment. He's locked down in the MotoGP paddock. It's absolutely incredible. He's seeing all the action. Before we go to him, though, it's going to be a quick hello to my wonderful co-host, Andra. How you doing, my dear? You've seen live racing again. Oh my God. The funniest thing, because I'm in Adelaide in Australia. So the MotoGP race was on at 3.30 in the morning and I have oh to God, get up. It was at, terrible, wasn't it? I get up at six to go to work. But anyway, so the night before I'm like, yep, I really want to see it, but I, I have an important job. I need to make sure I get enough sleep. You're a grown but, up. So I go to bed and I woke up at two and I was <laughs> like, all right, I'm awake. Moto2 will be on. I'll just have it a look. So I watched the last six. I'm lying in bed with the volume as quiet. I woke my husband up anyway, and I'm watching the last seven laps of that. And then I went, all right, that's okay. That was awesome. And then I'll go back to sleep. And then I woke up at about quarter past three and I'm like, oh my God, maybe I'll just watch the start. So I'm lying in bed with my phone and I watched the first. So I watched the Ducatis just like smash it at the start. I'm like, oh, all right, this is going to be boring. I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and I woke up and saw who won. And I'm just like, what on earth happened? Where but I was so from? tired all day. Cause I, I was like, it, you know, that feeling when you're a little kid on Christmas Eve, I kept yep. waking up going, oh, oh my God. Seriously. That was exactly, yeah, that was exactly what it was like. <laughs> I felt like it was Christmas. I was, I was having some serious insomnia issues. I watched the Moto2, I watched the F1 and I watched the MotoGP <laughs> race all live. <laughs> Couldn't sleep whatsoever. And so, oh. yeah, went to, went to bed about five o'clock in the morning and so, thunk, did not move. But anyway, so, yes, we've got the man himself. He's embedded in the paddock. He's in the bubble. Here he is, Manuel El Jefe. How are you doing, boss? How's things over there? Hola, brothers and sisters. How are you here? Today I am stuck in my room. Uh, He's in the bubble. In the golden bubble. I am here in my room. <laughs> and uh, as you... Look, I didn't have to wake up. I was very well uh, awakened when the, the race started and it was <laughs> so excited, you know, Indeed. so exciting. We started with uh, one of the typical Moto3 Moto races. Oh, three then, races were nuts. Yeah. And, and then in Moto2, we had our guys. We had uh, Remy there. Oh, Jake was there. Man, Sam Jake. was fantastic. Oh, you know, and we all feel a part of them because we have had them in our in our podcast. And then came the big show. The big yeah. show was great. Yeah. It was great. It was. It was. It was. It was absolutely amazing. It really was. So, look, before we get into it, I just want to point out to everybody, as you can probably see from from Manuel's video there. Yes, he's in a hotel room. No, he's not a tennis player in Melbourne. He, <laughs> but he is in his hotel room. He's, he's going to be moving around a fair bit as we talk oh, yes. to him. That's because he's standing up. He's made his own cute little standing desk. And at this point, I'll get our editor. There we go. You can see what his standing desk looks like. So, <laughs> yes, that is a bin that he's got his laptop on. <laughs> so he's well, rigged himself I, I, up a desk. Yeah, I have been working for hours on the table and my back was a little bit hurting. So I said, okay, I have to build up my own studio. And yes. here it is. No, I think well, you've done an amazing beautiful. job. Um, yep. Can I just say too, Manuel has had the vaccine and he's not a zombie. Uh, yay. Are still you? early days yeah. though. Yeah. I've, at night I switched off the light and I don't see anything strange. I haven't Brains. eaten any brains. <laughs> <laughs> so no and, side effects and, for you? And every, everything, my nose didn't grow, my ears didn't grow, so nothing did grow too much, so you didn't start same. speaking Chinese? Not yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> Did you, you have no, no side effects at all? No, nothing. Nothing. Good. Fantastic. And when you get in the second, I, second I, dose? Uh, yeah, I, I have to stay. Look, the race, this I have to stay another 10 days here mm -hmm. to get the second shot. So I am expected to leave the country on April 14th. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I arrive in Madrid on April 14th. A bike is waiting for me. I jump on the bike. I ride 900 k's down to Portimao, all straight from oh. Doha to Portimao, and wow. for the third Grand Prix. Do you think that 
it's a suffering for me. I think Not it must be all. terrible. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> are you okay? You lucky bugger. Stu, are uh, you yes, in? Stu, I, I'm going. I'm going to write the fantastic Africa Twin. Oh, so lovely! Easy, you know. Yeah, and I you must send us photos. Bike. Is 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 great. It's yeah, I'll I'll live vicariously through you. We've just gone into another period of lockdown here in Brisbane in Australia, so I'm I'm pretty much confined to to the, to this little temple you can see. And for those that can see on the video, I'm I'm talking to you from the luxury of my uh, my race seat. These aren't my ears. These are these are speakers behind me. So um, it's funny because we were we were sharing our setups. I'm not sharing mine because I'm in yeah. my bedroom. But um, Stu's in is very flash. F1 simulator. It's probably exactly like the one Rossi has. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> that's where, <laughs> where Stu's coming to us from. Yep. But that's why that's why you see my face go white and red all the time on the side of the screen. because I've got triple screens here. And as I bring other screens up on the side, the whole glow from the screen changes the side of my face. But anyway, wow. let's let's get straight into it. So, Manuel, do you want to talk about MotoGP first or should we talk about the, the lower classes first or get straight into no, it? No, oh. no, 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 no. We have to start with the uh, filet mignon, okay? Exactly. <laughs> and the filet mignon was obviously the MotoGP race. So wow. uh, we can, I think we can, uh, I would like to, to organize it in a way of who lost and who won in that yeah. race, right? Because there is, uh, there was just one guy on the top of the podium, but there were others who we can say won in the yes. side. So yep. where, where do you prefer us to start? Let's talk about the winners to start with, realistically. I mean, I, I think we, we talk about the people not on the podium that we, that we see as winners. And look, I don't know what you're going to say, but for me, Alicia Spargro, massive winner as far as I'm concerned. Well, the list... Just let, let's point the list. The list yeah. of winners is quite easy. Obviously, Maverick Vinales. Yep. Big winner. Without the prize, Joan Mir. Oh, yes. Oh, what a, <gasps> what a ride. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Just, just continue to prove what, what he showed last year. Like, realistically, fantastic. Another winner, as you pointed, was uh, Aprilia and Alexis Spargaro. Mm -hmm. Yep. And another guy who won that, you know, because he, just, he finished a little bit in the back, but you don't notice was Enea Bastianini. Mm, he oh, did for his ride. first, a... yes. Yes. Yep. So uh, let's go th through them. There is four guys, all right? Okay, let's start with Vinales. Vinales did one of these races that he had, you know, I think that to understand Vinales, we have to hire an, how do you call it in English? An ast a guy specialized in astrology. Oh, yes. Yeah, right. and, yeah, yeah we do. A psychic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, yes. yeah because with, with, with uh, Vinales, it's not down to a psychologist. No, it's like an astrologist. Up and, if yeah. Sat Saturno and the moon and the constellation. Because yeah. we, we have to discover when happens that the uh, Vinales turns into last uh, and I was actually, I was so confused because everything last year we spoke about him I think every episode I think he was a different person he was I think I saw that killer in him he yep. was just committed he was confident I yeah look look but I was thinking and uh the last time Vinales uh, did a race like this was uh last time when he won in Misano Yep. Remember, in Misano, he did one of these races, Stu. And if you remember, in Misano, the, the protagonists were Pañaya and Jaumir yep. and, and, uh, and Vinales. And yep. in Misano, there was also Valentino, who this time was not in the, in the script. But mm. they were exactly... The, that's why I ask you about the astrology. So they were the, the same three protagonists. And the situation, I don't know if it's coincidence or if it's uh, that some uh, planets were in line, but <laughs> the situation was the same in Misano. Remember Misano? What happened in Misano special? That Maverick ha was able to prepare the race a lot because there had been a race before. Before the second race, and there was a test. Yes. So he arrived completely with everything in its place. Mm -hmm. And Manuel, Again, what's with him yes. doing his with his start practices? He listened to you. 
Yes. What a start. Doing his starting yeah. practice every time he went out on the track, he practiced. He, he his only start. No, but look, yeah, yeah, not but, a few look, places at the start, not not heaps. Yeah, no, but the start was uh, was he he started better, but again, but this time uh, he didn't give up, you know, mm, because yeah. when he he misses the start, normally you can see, but this time it's like happening in Misano, and this time it was very interesting, and because. He started, okay, and then we saw these four Ducatis in the front. Oh, we'll and talk I think about that more you mentioned, minute, yeah. you, you mentioned, you said, okay, mm. now the, that's it. The, 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 that's it, exactly. Yep. But Vinales was so smart this time because he just stuck on the on Quartararo's bike. Mm -hmm. You know, he got stuck, and then he let Quartararo do the dirty job. He did. He dragged. He dragged him along. Exactly. And as we were, yeah, as we were hearing from the commentators, there's been conversations in that Yamaha pit where they're not going to go and block past each other because that slows down the both of them. That slows down the team. And so it seems like there was a few moments there where Vinales could have blocked past Quadraro, but he let him go. He, he, he stayed behind him, and then when he did make his move. It was a it was a clean pass, and Quattararo had dragged him along to everybody else. Andra, I just want to give you what my thoughts are, but tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm sure you will. But yeah. from and I know through my learning process, but I noticed, and I know I'm talking about other riders here, but people's tires were wearing out. But it seemed like Mav Maverick really maintained all of that. So I was wondering, was he? on purpose, not trying to fight to get to the front straight up. And he was, he was in like Fabio's slipstream a lot. And yep. he was just sort of sitting back, biding his time for the right moment. Yeah, he was looking after tires. Yeah. Where, you know, Jack, whatever, they had the bikes that could do it, but obviously burnt through their tires. So was he riding smarter from that respect? Is that something yeah, look, you think he was doing? Look, it's not a coincidence that two of the riders we have just mentioned at winners, they acted the same way in the race, you know? Mm. Uh, Stu speaks about team orders. I bet you that Quartararo would have appreciated very much if Maverick would have went into the front. But yeah. Maverick and uh, Joan Mir did exactly the same. They let their, their teammates yes. yep. push them to the front mm -hmm. and to do what we can call all the dirty job. Exactly. Yeah. The dirty work. You know, because uh, while uh, it was, it, it, it's like in cycling. You know, in cycling where there is a group yep. and the yep. the leader, the leader of the cycling team, he's always the last one of his team because yeah. the other through. one they eat the mosquitoes. You know, and they, <laughs> they cover the. And then when it That's comes right. to the, they come to the finish. All the rest are completely burned, burn out, and yeah. then. The leader. It's exactly what happened. In right. fact, there's a rabbit after, up front who just who 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 cuts up cuts a path through, and then just moves out of the way and and lets the guy through. Yep. Yeah, and after the race, uh, Maverick explained very well. He said, "Look, in the middle of the race, when Quartararo was catching up the group and I was behind, this allowed me to ride, basically using the front. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, pushing the front, pushing the front, and yep. this allowed me." Because I could save tires for the end. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I was kind of okay. right. Yeah, you were. Yeah, no, it, yeah. Right. yeah. And, and as soon, and as soon as Quartararo's tire dropped down, mm -hmm. then he had a highway ready. So mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Quartararo built built a highway for for Vinales. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to the end, Vinales was. Uh, I, I don't know if he's clever or not, but he knew what he had to do. Look, it's very interesting. The difference in top speed between the Ducati and the Yamaha is so big. It, it's around 12 Ks, okay? Yeah, yeah. That, hang on, how can I explain it? Uh, simple, okay. The <laughs> Yamaha, in one, in, in one lap, the Yamaha were basically as fast as the Ducati in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But they, they on the straight, they lost, they lost a lot of, of tenths mm -hmm. because of the oh. top speed. So yeah, in the rest of the track... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I nearly so, cried for him. Yeah, we'll get to that. 
So imagine how fast the Yamaha were in the rest mm -hmm. of the track to catch up what they lost on the straight. So what did, and Maverick knew this. So what did he do? He waited to overtake until corner 15. There are 16 corners in Los mm -hmm. So he, exactly. He went inside here in turn 15. And between the turn 15 and 16, he pushed and opened a little gap. Mm -hmm. Yep. Little gap. The gap he knew he needed to avoid the Ducati catch him out of the straight. On the mm -hmm. straight, exactly. He just got himself okay. enough gap so they wouldn't catch him on the straight. So then he'd have the whole of the next lap to increase the gap that's the Yamaha strength. So then they can't get him on the next lap on the straight and he can grow that gap, which is exactly okay, what he did. Okay, very yeah. good, too. So if you go to the numbers, to the, to the racing sheet, uh, you see that the first time he, he crossed the finish line in front, he made it just 0 0.1 second advantage. So mm -hmm. the Ducati was just behind, but he managed to arrive in front. Yep. In the next lap, the gap was already 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The race finished there. Yeah, he'd mm -hmm. broken understand? the toe. Yeah. Exactly. And there he knew that, okay, I am done. Yep. What he had to avoid and what he did very smartly was the Ducati just arriving at the, at the breaking point of the straight mm -hmm. in front. Yeah. Once he was there, he used all the rest, like you said, Stu, to open up this advantage. And there was the race. Exactly. That's the smartest I've seen Sorry. him. <gasps> it's exactly what Mir was not capable to do. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, they tried yes. The, they tried the same. Maverick made it. Uh, Mir not. Yeah. But Can yeah, I, Android, yeah. You're oh, saying, no, I was yeah. just going to say, Matt, that's the smartest I've seen him ride. And I'm really curious what what's changed or what has switched. I heard that he's got a new crew chief. He's having a baby. What, would that? I assume that that would have made him less distracted. No, the crew chief, he has not a, crew, a new crew chief. The problem is oh. that the crew chief, he has had uh, the, the PCR came mm -hmm. out oh, okay. neutral. Neutral, not uh, even positive. Right. So they, they stuck him in the hotel for six days. Yep. Uh, so, so because he, of that, he has to use somebody else. Yeah, but look, but the crew chief returned on Saturday. Okay, so that's right. not... I was Yeah, I'm just trying to think what something switched in him so, and I wasn't expecting it. No, but... Yeah, he, but he was interviewed uh, by and, Manuel in the off-season and Manuel told him what he was doing wrong. That's true. what's changed. <laughs> no, but, but Andrew, as we spoke, it's, uh, you know, it's probably down to astrology, but it's the same that happened in, in Misano the last year. And again, the coincidences, which were the coincidences? Was they the had same? a lot of time. Yeah, should a line up the stars. Prepare the race. Yep. Yeah, so, exactly. Because so he's not it's, consistent. It's, but yeah. That, that's actually the next thing, Manuel. Is this, because uh, a lot of people already, I'm hearing, oh, it's the Manuel's, uh, sorry, uh, Manuel, Vinales has <laughs> clicked and now this nah. is going to be his year. You know, all those people who jump on the winning rider straight away. Yeah, exactly. So what I've seen in the last five, seven, eight years, Vinales has one incredible race like this every one to two seasons. Is Was this his race? Or are we, are we, we going to see we some more know. consistency? We don't know because we have to see, look, uh, uh, after one race, you never know, you know, yep. but uh, uh, what is clear is that after this race and racing in the same track, guys, it's funny because now some of them have homeworks to do for next mm -hmm. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we will see what is happening. Uh, going back to experience, because at the end, races are basically statistics, you know, it's yep. so in racing. It's not a hundred percent maths, but more or less the numbers show you what is going to happen. If, if we go back to last year where we saw a lot of races, dub, um, you know, doubly mm -hmm. in the yep. same circuit, there were the second race was we never assumed the same, the same results, the but it was different. And you got all your yeah. Ducati guys are now going to go, all right, yep, yeah, we wore our tires out a bit. How can we do that smarter? That's Frankie's it. bike's going to be working. So you're exactly. going to chuck him amongst and the, Valet, Exactly. Yeah. All, yeah. Imagine you mentioned Morbidelli. Imagine with the attitude that Franco will go out in this race. Yep. He will he will have the wish to eat them all, you know, after the mm -hmm. frustration yeah. of the so, mm -hmm. yep. what was it? The rear shock we'll rear shock 
shockies? No, the, the, the problem is, is very simple. Look, they have this system to lower down the bike at the start, right? Yep. To, avo to avoid wheeling. So this system is mechanical system because mm -hmm. Gyro. The, elect the electronic suspension is not allowed by rule mm -hmm. in MotoGP. So they have to lower the bike. I don't know how with a mechanical system. What happened? That this system didn't come back to normal configuration. So he had to race the whole uh, race with a, basically a custom bike. And it's like, like I was going to say, he's riding a low rider. <laughs> a, so imagine all, all the bike, all the setup of the bike and all the work they have done on a certain geometry, you know, yeah. and suddenly yep. it's completely Ooh. different. Yep. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a okay. silly mistake that shouldn't happen though, right? Well, like a, a technical mistake. mistake. Or, yeah, mechanical, mm -hmm. mechanical error. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, Vinales, fantastic result. I am so happy for him. It's so good to see, to throw another protagonist in there for the, for the mix for, the, for 2021. Um, but what about Mia as well? Oh An another, another great performance from Mia. It's fantastic. I really, uh, the other one got the, 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 the trophy, but I think the winner was Mia of this race. Yeah. He, yeah, did, he did an incredible job. Look, he started, I think, 10th. That is fourth yeah. row of the grid mm -hmm. once again, and he and they were he and his teammate were really far from the top group, mm. but they came, they came, and it what look the good thing of Mir is that he didn't get nervous at all because mm. like Rins did, Rins get anxious, got mm. anxious, you know, and he would and he made pushed both forward. But me yep. stayed there. He stayed there. He waited. He waited until the moment came. So he really acted like a champion. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. He did. Tell he, me he if mature. And and you know I don't rate him. He's not up there in my top riders. I'm sorry, Stu. <laughs> but I wasn't expect. And again, I even I, like and I don't know too because I'm learning more. But I, yeah, that you could tell his skill the way he rode. But that last corner, he went a bit wide, and I was trying to work out. Because those Ducatis obviously blitzed him in the last straight, which was mm. heartbreaking because it's like he wasn't Gosh. moving. But I was trying to calculate if he hadn't gone wide on that last corner, would it have given him enough advantage to place no. or no. Didn't, they were just too fast? I, I think his problem, he had, he uh, uh, overtook Zarco too late. Mm -hmm. mm. You understand? Because okay. he, sh he should have, like Maverick did, between corner 15 and 16, he should have gained there some some gap. gap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As okay. as his overtaking was very tight at the end, what did he do? He tried to do a super good uh, six corner sixteen. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he, he missed the braking and he went out into the dirt and with the tarmac full of sand, you mm -hmm. realize that where he was, he opened the gas and the bike seemed that it it didn't. Go Did forward, nothing. you know, exactly. Yeah, because the bike so was that the, the wheelie thing, wheel or was, was that? Oh, no, 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 no. the real wheel was spinning. Yep, spinning. So he he could have imagined if he had finished second, mm -hmm. he would have been the hero of the race. Yeah, easy, easy. Absolutely. So yeah. in, instead of this, he finished fourth, but. He did perform. Incredibly. Oh, he was amazing. Oh, he, yeah, I was impressed. Yeah, I, I was very impressed. And we saw again that the dynamic of the Suzuki has not changed. Remember that we have spoken along the whole winter that the problem of the Suzuki is that it's basically a Sunday race bike. Yeah, it doesn't have the one but, lap pace. Yes, but Stu, as I have nothing to think about, I was thinking about this here. And I tell you something that I am going to analyze and I'm going, we try to write. And tomorrow I have an interview with a guy from Suzuki because uh, I checked how many pole positions Rins and Mir have along his career. Mm -hmm. Not only in Moto, not only in Moto, MotoGP, but in Moto2 and in Moto3. Mm. And Mir hasn't and got many at all, has he? Mir, I think there are three in all, and he's world champion in all his career. Yeah, and Rins, yep. I think he has five. Uh -huh. So, and then you see the, the victories. I think uh, Rins has 12 victories and five poles. Yep. And the other one, normally, and the relationship between victories and poles with the good riders are more equal. So yeah, at mm -hmm. the end, the thing is that we are in front of two riders 
who never have been capable to qualify well. Wow. Yeah. This is the history. These are That's the numbers. Telling. So is it the bike or are, are, or is it the riders? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore I'm going to talk with a technician tomorrow, mm -hmm. I think Suzuki, because I am sure they are questioning themselves the same. Yeah, no doubt. They, they would be at this point. I'm, I'm sure they've, they've done a similar evaluation to, to, to what you've just let us know then. That'd be really interesting. Let's, let's maybe uh, loop back on that next week to, to hear what the, uh, what, what the technicians are saying there. Yeah, because uh, maybe because once they said the sentence regarding this, mm -hmm. they said, yes, we don't qualify well, but when Maverick was, was with us, Huh. We did pole positions. Yeah, they it did. It was just it. like, mm. we just throw it, you know? It's a throwaway comment, but it's there. They yes. know it, yeah. So this is interesting. So at the end, but look, yeah, going back to the Suzuki, whoever is the one who is guilty for this, what is clear is that the virtues of the Suzukis in the race are so strong that compensate all the rest. Yeah. They are so strong in the race, so, so strong. You know, mm -hmm. the virtues are so big that they can equal what they lose in the practice with what they gain in the races. If Mir, look, this is uh, absolutely science fiction, but if Mir, instead of starting for the fourth row, would have started for the second row, what would he say? He would have won the race. Yeah, you think so. Because, yeah. again, numbers. At a certain point in the race, if you look, if you check, he was 3.2 seconds uh, from the lead. Mm -hmm. Three, if you check how the, the gap he entered in, in uh, uh, he finished the race, I think he catched up during the race almost two and a half seconds. Ha! In yeah. MotoGP, where the gap is so small. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Wow, that's crazy. So, you know, uh, uh, everything can, can be analyzed, you know, mm. and, and I think that's what they do in the garage, or at least this is what the technicians should do and what the engineers do. They don't keep talking. No, no, no. They go down to the data. They analyze here, 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 and there. It's all and in look, the numbers. And, yeah, and I tell you something more, and this, for me, is really the exciting of all I this. like when Manuel's look. standing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Um, the engines have not been changed from last year to this year, mm -hmm. right? That's right, yep. Okay. So Yamaha knew perfectly the, that the gap with the Ducati would kill them. Mm. And there was no way to catch up because they cannot work on the engine. Nothing I can do about it, yeah. So now, Andra, let me explain you. So the Ducati is much faster. Mm -hmm. So what did, what did Yamaha look for? To get to the top speed quicker than the Ducati because it's not mm. the, the, the key is not how much faster you go. The key is how much time Getting you there. are at that top speed. Mm -hmm. yep. You understand? Yep. And this is called acceleration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In physics. Is it the breaking so, point as well? Like whether they're breaking a bit no, later? The breaking or... point is another story. Okay. But we are talking about how much does it take to take to get to the top speed and then how much do you maintain the top speed mm -hmm. so what did yamaha do it's so interesting they worked basically in getting to the top speed as quick as possible this is acceleration and traction so what mm -hmm. on where did they work on on the third and the fourth gear Stu. they concentrated uh, okay. their yeah. job but entering in the in the straight so their work was okay we will lose on the straight, but we have to get the, out there as quick as possible. So they work during the tests yep. on the third and the fourth gear. Because that's the, quicker that's to the, the gear speed. that they come out of the last corner to, to give them that. Yeah, no, okay, the so gear is second. The gear. gear is second, but they need. And then another interesting comment was that Maverick, after the race, he mentioned Carl Crutchlow. Mm -hmm. I did hear he that. Said, yeah, he said the job done by Carl ah. has been amazing and Carl just arrived and what and he explained yes as he is coming from an, another brand mm -hmm. 
he has explained us a lot, which translated means yeah. that Carl has shown Yamaha a certain way of managing the racing setup strategy. Yeah, a different philosophy that maybe mm -hmm. he got from Honda. He's cross-pollinating it. Nice. Exactly. It's so Very interesting. Cool. You say but again, Maverick's listening. Like he's he's listening well, to yeah. people. He's listening. Yeah, he's listening to what's going on and, and he's taking the advice. Maturity. Yeah, but, 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 but for me, the, the interesting thing is what I tell you, how the engineers work, you know? Because the Yamaha, you, have, you can have two attitudes or say, we can do nothing. We just uh, lose on the straight and that's what we have. No, but engineers, and this is what fascinates me of them is they have, you know, they look at the problem and they approach it from thousands yep. of different mm -hmm. points. Yep. We normal people, uh, thinking people with heart and not a machine in the, you know, mm -hmm. we focus something and then we get uh, blocked on our way, on our we uh, view. Yep. You understand? Yep. Do they? So interesting. Do they like get, how, how do they do this? What sort of forum do they get together after like a whole group of them and like brainstorm and go over it or do one or two go off and sit and analyze it? I've, I've been really enjoying watching some of the stuff that's coming out of MotoGP that's showing you those behind the scenes processes. Mm -hmm. If you get the chance, go and look at the crowning Suzuki and the Yamaha Patronus uh, behind the scenes oh, documentary. I did watch them. I must have paid attention to that bit. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it's it's really, yeah, really good. Yep. And 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 Manuel, I also heard a rumor while we're on that, actually. I heard a rumor, and you might have seen this on the weekend, that um, you're aware that there's a documentary on Netflix called Drive to Survive. I heard a rumor that Netflix are also starting to film a documentary for MotoGP that you may have seen some camera crews in and around the uh, the circuit there on the weekend. Did you see any well, of them? Uh, Stu, I have been locked in the press room, as you know, but uh -huh. I know that uh, a colleague of mine um, met Valentino Rossi in the hotel gym. Right. It seems that Valentino made the comment that they were working on it or they wanted to work on it. Mm -hmm. But then he was asked officially in the press conference and he said he had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so one, one thing is the official version and, and then we have the gym version. <laughs> exactly, which I always believe. I always believe it. So moving, moving on, I really want to have a chat about Alicia Spargo and Aprilia. What, what an amazing weekend all around for them, not just the race, but what a great week, weekend for, uh, for, for the Grazini Aprilia team. Yes, and this is I. It's funny because I have a very quite close relationship with people of Aprilia, and they mm -hmm. told me, "Look, we have told Aleish one million times, Aleish, you have to finish this race. Mm -hmm. You have to bring the bike to the checkered flag. Yeah, we need the data because you are our only rider." And I can imagine, and this is joking that when he went to sleep, they put some ear pods inside, repeating him. Yep. Finish the race, finish the race, finish the race, finish yep. the race. So <laughs> he not only made it, but he made it with a fantastic result. Oh, you know, he yeah. finished seventh. Nine points, yeah. Yeah, in, in front of his brother, in mm -hmm. front of the first, in front of the first Honda, in front, in, fer, in front of a guy called Jack Miller, in front mm -hmm. of a guy called Brad Binder, Miguel Oliveira, Stefan Bradel, Valentino Rossi, all these guys finished yep. behind the mm -hmm. Aprilia. So mm -hmm. for them, at the end, it's only a seventh point, uh, a seventh uh, position. But as you say, the them, key thing as well, his teammate plumb last, the last finisher in mm -hmm. 19th place. So that's, yeah. that shows you a, a, a lot there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but he's not really someone to judge by, is he? No, Sorry, I don't mean that to that be Somebody, uh, it's an imposition, you know, uh, yeah. having Salvadori mm. is somebody of the company uh, that wanted an Italian rider instead of Bradley Smith, because Bradley yeah. would have done better than this, clearly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But but then I told I tell you that this, going back to Alej, they, they had told him, okay, finish this race, finish this race. Then he said... In the second race, if you want, we take off the brakes and you can crash one. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. 
<laughs> the, but the first one you have to finish. So yeah. fantastic job that will boost the team, will boost the the, the racing department, and yep. especially probably will boost the one who gives the racing department the money they need exactly. to develop. So do you think was that clearly them telling him to just be extra careful and finish the race? Is that what happened? Yes. No, no, the it was. Okay. Yes. No, no, I don't know if it was to be careful. It was just the order was bring the bike back to the garage. That's, yeah. But the, the, the thing that I see as being different with that, that's like, that that's fantastic that he's, he's listened and he's obviously ridden a very mature race. But normally when you've seen in years gone past, you've seen an Aprilia finish a race in seventh position and you go, oh my God, Aprilia's in seventh. When you have a look at the history of the race, it started 15th, five or six people crashed. It was a wet race and he came through and just made seventh on the line. This was different. He was up there the entire time and he went down to seventh pretty much by, by the end of the race. So it's, it's a fast bike. It's a very, very good bike. Yeah. In, it's a competitive bike on a circuit that matches the bike yeah. and on a circuit that Aleix has been always fast. But at the end, it's the same circuit for all. Yeah. So very positive. And I, I think that uh, it has done very good to the team, to the project, to the confidence of the people. So they are really boosted. Perfect. Speaking nice. about confidence, Anaya Bastanini, Anaya Bastanini in his first MotoGP race. Wow. I liked look. him until Jake said he was a bell end. And now I'm going to go with what Jake said. But <laughs> yeah. um, was it 10th for his first MotoGP ride? Brilliant. Ten, he was 13th on the grid. Mm-hmm. One three, yeah. Just uh, in front of uh, Jorge Martin, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Then we saw Jorge Martin with this amazing start that nobody understand where he came from. He had a missile Jorge, of his bum. Yes. <laughs> yeah. From position fourteenth, he arrived at the first corner fourth. Yep. You know what they reminded the- me of? Did, did, does, any, did anybody here play Mario Kart? It's not well, you, but yes. You know, you know where you where you get the little where you go over the turbo mushroom on America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Sorry, Manuel, go on. No, so and Enea instead, Enea who has started thirteenth, when he crossed the first time he crossed the, the finish line, he was nineteenth. Yeah. Yeah. So he had he Climbed had lost his way six, back. six positions, mm. and. And have a check. Tell me where he finished. Ten. Yeah, in in front of Rossi. Oh, in front of ten. Yeah, Miguel ten. Oliveira. Main yeah, thing. from nineteenth, a rookie who have never had a yep. MotoGP race didn't know how much physically how he did to manage his physics in yep. the tires. He yeah. made it from nineteenth to tenth. He ended behind a guy Jack Miller. So mm-hmm. for Enea, it was you know it was it is one of the hidden heroes of that race he's just yeah, well and truly so. he's there and deserves to be there mm, indeed he, he definitely does fantastic and i'm really looking forward to seeing a lot more of him this year as well so and and Stu, tell me you are looking at the list where did jorge martin finish yeah 15th. i was yeah i was going to talk about jorge martin that was that was george, george martin as we like to call him um yeah george, george finished unfortunately 15th after that incredible start like I thought for sure he was going to get a penalty. I thought he, he must have jumped the start or something, but amazing start. And it just goes to show that, um, that, that start device that they've got on the, on the Ducati. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh we, yeah. I think we're going to That's see. That's going to take some getting used to year, as well. We? That's yeah. got to take. Yeah. yeah. And, but look, it was a fantastic start. He appeared on the TV. Everybody spoke about him. Yeah. But the, the, the end result shows what does it shows that in racing it's not down how it starts the matter is how it yeah. ends and <laughs> i think he's someone he, that's going to take a little bit of time to get comfortable in moto gp and i think so i yeah. think so i think the key thing there as well is his teammate finished in second so mm. it's it, it's not about the bike it's clearly not about the bike he has the ability to race up there oh, so yeah. as you say like bastianini is learning his race craft it's all about learning your way through MotoGP. He came through to, to finish 10th. Jorge Martin, yes, he needs to learn some more of that MotoGP racecraft and uh, look after those tyres on that big brute of a Ducati, definitely. 
So with Jack, right. was I have to ask about Jack? Was this purely he just didn't get the tires to last? Yeah, look, I think I think that Jack uh, lost completely the confidence. He may say another thing. I mm. I tell you what I think. Okay, he he crashed twice Saturday, I think. Mm-hmm. So he lost the confidence. Friday he was like Superman, Iron Man, and all together. Mm-hmm. So Saturday he lost the confidence, and then on Sunday, people who criticize Jack tell him that he is like a straw. Straw in German it's straw. You know, dried. How do you call dried uh, grass? Yes, straw. straw. Yeah, straw. It's yep. like straw fire. Yes. Yeah. yeah gra- yep. Grass no. spot. Yeah. Exactly. He yep. burns they call him. They, yeah, they call him uh, Mr. Straw Fire. He just goes and out so hard and fast. He just needs to. Thing right. is, he it was that was in. mature. He he lost mm-hmm. the tires, and as as he was saying in all the interviews, he hit a wall. Is what he's saying. Mm-hmm. So we lost the tires. In other years, yes, he might have conti- tried to continue to push really hard, and he would have come off. He would have gone completely. At least he stayed on the bike and he finished and he got a result. I think that's the difference that I'm seeing this year. Can I ask? Does the Look, with uh, this? They- Oh, I was just going to ask with the whole shot advice, advice, device, <laughs> um, does that affect the tyres? If these bikes now have this power to just take off so powerful and fast, does that affect no. the tyres? So. No, and it's, and right, this is 300 metres of the race. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I suppose that is only for the takeoff, not for sort of during. Uh, yeah. yeah, and oh, okay. I tell you something more. Look, I don't know if you watched Q2 or, yeah, mm-hmm. if you saw it on TV when there was an image of Jack going out of the garage. And he, he was, was like, he was, he was <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, concentrate and stop doing the, you know, the Tarzan. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. the jungle, it's a race. He cut yeah. out like, ah, I'm coming the down. Thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and what happened? Nothing. Is yeah. it having so the big powerful let... bike? Is it, does that make someone's mental state different when they go out on the track? They're like, I've got, I'm on the best Ducati, I'm on the best bike on the field. Does that change? I don't know because the others, what the Banyaya did an incredible yeah. uh, pole position lap. Incredible. Maybe Sarko you're just feeling well, the pressure so. of being the number mm. one Ducati rider. Maybe that's what Bravo, it is. bravo. Yes, yeah. too. Yes, too. Mm. You know, he is, I am here, I am in the garage. As you said, now when he does, the thing does not work, he cannot crash anymore like he did in Prama mm-hmm. because exactly. now he has a responsibility. And yeah. that's He's a nice looking bike. You don't want to wreck yeah. that. And Gigi has said that openly to the media. He's already said, even in the um, in the in the year the year opening presentation, Gigi openly said to all the cameras, perhaps in years gone past, Jack might have just gone and crashed. Crashed this year, we want him to be sensible. So I, that that I think that was a very um, controlled comment that he made there. Yeah, that 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 is everything, you know. That is, and this Jacks when he goes on the track, he has this here. Oh yeah. Yep, because don't, don't don't disappear, don't disappoint uh, Gigi Dalina. Mm-hmm. Because amigo, Gigi Dalina is not the one to have as an enemy. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, Gigi Putin Dalina. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so we've we've I think we've already spoken about the first loser. I think we can say Jack was yeah sort of on the on yeah, the weekend. Well, He's look, sort of in but, the middle. Yeah, the the loser. They are just defeated. Let's call it defeated. You know, defeated. Defeated was Jack. Defeated was Valentino. Mm-hmm. He got bumped by Brad Binder. Oh, he did yes. too. He got nerfed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when, when people saw Valentino finishing fourth in practice, his million of us were expected, oh. wow. Yeah. But this fourth was a, a desert mirage. Yes. Because it was just the fourth. Behind he was, Peko he was, Yeah, he was towed mm. exactly. On but that, even on that everyone line. was making the comments. He got towed. Blah blah blah. They all bloody do it. <laughs> Why was it? That's that's part of the thing, isn't it? Yeah. No. no the, the, look, he would never have done this by himself. No. And the merit of Valentino was not crashing, trying to follow Peko, Peko yep, yep. You know, Because there, there wouldn't be many who could have stayed behind that lap with Peko. In this, Valentino is a master. You know, he has a lot of experience. Mm. He probably never crashes doing this. And Others he just rides, you can see he's riding smart. Yeah, he's riding Valentino's time. Mm. But in the race, 
the same. He has been one of the disappointments because and the 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 the, the how do you say what he said the declaraciones his words were the same than Jack. The my my back tie my tire in the back finished mm -hmm. and I don't know why. The yeah. same that Jack said. The same yeah. that Ring said. The same that Quartararo said. So they exactly. simply were not capable to manage the tires, which other riders did. Can you explain to me? Because being the night race, I was trying to understand how they do the setup and everything during the day when it's like what nearly 40 degrees celsius mm -hmm. no but night there, there time is a it's maybe 20 so how are they getting the setup when the race is completely different no, conditions because they, they, they there are two practice sessions one each day that mm -hmm. is at the race time oh okay okay so and what do they do during the race i spoke with this with the michelin guys during the day that the the temperature of the track was 45 or something like this. Yeah, what did nice. they do? They were trying Farming. the tires for Thailand and Malaysia. Ah. They were okay. doing the tests, the tire tests that they could not do in Sepang because of the cancellation of the tests. Fair enough. So FP1 and FP2 counted nothing and will not count nothing. And yeah. we'll, we'll, in the next practice, so Take this in consideration. If you see, wow, uh, whoa, he's in the top in FP3. Yep. Doesn't count. Yeah. And, and we noticed, uh, Andrew and I were talking uh, online while we were watching uh, some of those practice sessions and qualifying sessions, especially with Moto3 and Moto2 during the day. They were sliding all over the place. It was, it was <sighs> really dodgy. Yeah, the, the poor guys of Moto3. Oh. You know, the when they went out, the tarmac was 60 degrees. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> if one of them would have crashed and would have uh, laid on the on the asphalt, he would have burned <laughs> like, <laughs> like a yeah. cigar. You know? Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. So other other losers. I mean, I'd, I'd like to put, unfortunately, LCR Honda into, into the loser bracket as well. Oh, because yeah. They didn't have a ride to finish, unfortunately. That I think that that's that's really bad. At least, I mean, Takanakagami, he, yeah, he's he's had a few crashes. I would have thought at least Alex Marquez would have finished at least finished that race, but they got no data from that race at all, did mm -hmm. they? Yeah, no, and and we have said this before. I think in our previous podcast, uh, Los Isles Circuit is probably one of the worst track for Honda in the whole season. Yeah. Yep. yeah remember that Mark has won there just once, 2014. Mm -hmm. Remember that in the in the tests the Hondas crashed 10 times. 10 times. Yep. All the all the riders had crashed. So basically we saw what was expected. There was nothing different that we imagined. Exactly. And same and, with KTM. Uh, I have to say Paul Espargaro, I think he, at the end he did a good job. Mm. And it, I don't it dislike sound... him this year. I don't. Sorry? I'm, I'm. I don't dislike him anymore. Something. And why did you dislike him before? Oh, because I'm a woman and there's something about him. Because he was <laughs> no. a whinging bitch. The thing, but then it's is it because he's gone to Honda now? He's like, yep, this is where I want to be. Something settled in him. He doesn't seem as much of a dickhead. Maybe. Just wait him. <laughs> yeah, give, give him, him a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that he doesn't seem like a dickhead. Give him time. He'll be Just okay. Hold my beer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no, you're right. He finished oh. eighth and he came into the pit and they were patting him on the back and congratulating mm. him. They didn't expect any more than that, I think, at the moment. Yeah. Look, but this, I didn't see that image you just described. But if I were Honda, I would fire all the mechanics. How, being Honda, can you tell somebody who finished eighth? congratulate somebody yeah hey you are talking about honda exactly. honda races just to win yep. when they do second they are upset yeah now a guy who does eight becomes ah oh, come on so why I, why I, I are was, they doing that is it for him or is it why would they be doing that because uh the one who ran this garage don't understand the spirit of honda okay yeah. it's that's not honda that's not honda look i, I was going to say that he did a decent job and saying this and having finished eight is uh, strange no, for Honda mm. and shows where Honda is now. 
without yeah true. it was just one race yeah but it's a race in the same place next week this weekend as well so mm. and even okay. you say and you and you cannot congratulate and celebrate an eight, an eight place exactly yeah <laughs> yeah true what's um, that so we ha- let's let's move forward quickly to moto two please no no we have to no, talk no, about no. Oh, we ha- have oh, hang forgot- on we got one more. We forgot. We forgot the biggest loser of this race, Danilo, because he fell off on the second corner. Well, no, it's no, no. no. The biggest, <laughs> the biggest loser of this race. It's very clear, Ducati. Oh, yeah, I was yes. like thinking of a person. Yeah, yeah. What? no, du- Ducati finished. They put two riders on the podium, second and third. Mm. But yep. they were the big losers because yeah. they had the fastest bike. They did a fantastic pole position and there were one, two, three, four into the first corner. And remember that they had won 2019, 2018 with a rider they kicked out of the team. Yes, of course, Dovi. Yeah. So the big loser is Ducati because while they had Dovizioso, he was smart enough in taking out the maximum of the tools he had, that, that mm-hmm. the tools were exactly the same. Yeah, but the others didn't manage to stop Vinales, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. And Dovizioso they shouldn't did. let a and Yamaha I... get that far away from him. It should exactly. never happen. No, because look, he he beat last year. No, the last two times he beat Marcus on the on the finish line because yeah. he just waited. He just stayed there and let Marcus do all the job. So mm-hmm. the big losers is Ducati, and if Ducati doesn't win next Sunday, it will be oh. an disaster there it are will. three circuits that you can call i don't know why it is, it is called los isles circuit it should be called ducati, ducati there yeah. are three one there, is austria los isles austria and mugello yes so they have to win there so they already have given away five points that is very yep uh for them it's a big defeat they, they, imagine if Juan Mir would have uh, uh, finished second. Oh, yeah, that'd be that. Yeah, exactly. That'd be crazy. And realistically, I see it as more than five points as well because they really are putting all of their efforts behind Jack Miller this year. And Jack Miller finishing ninth, he's lost a lot of points to uh, to the Yamahas there. So yeah, but yeah. well, I think that I also I always said that uh, Gigi Dalinha likes a lot Johan Sarko. That's why he put him in this team. He was he fast. Let him, he was yeah. fast. And look, what I like most of, of Zarko. Did you see his image after the race? He with was the just like... Here, without having shaved for weeks. Yeah. He, and he, wasn't, looking, he didn't look like excited a either. Dude. He was just... Yes. If, if you find him in a dark uh, street, you give him the <laughs> wallet immediately without yeah. asking. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I and if, if you compare, <laughs> yeah, and if you compare his image like a uh, homeless, he looks like, uh, Andra, if you go to France, the Motards, that is the name of the bikers there, yep. the Motards in France have a very bad image. Yeah. Very bad. And that's it? Is Motards, that what he's And he, he's, he's like the real representative of the Motards. Yeah. You know, I like him because he is a, he's a real biker. He's a, mm-hmm. He likes basically racing. If you compare him with these Spaniards, the Italians. But he's, he's not there for all, the fame and shaved, fortune. All shaved mm-hmm. with cream, yep. with the hair all perfect. Yep. Then he comes out without shaving, with a mask here, yep. down here. So he is fantastic. Smoking like a cigarette, him. eating yep. a baguette. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he, do, he doesn't seem to care about the fame or the fortune or the popularity. No, 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 no. He's just... He's but he racer. was just, there was nothing there on his face. As in his, he wasn't happy, he wasn't smiling. He was just kind of. Really tired. It's Sarko, but but I, I like, you know, he's a, a, a it's one of the special characters of the championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is indeed. He is for sure. Yep. Um. All right, Moto 2, Sam Lowe's, what a ride. <sighs> oh my goodness. Shut the gate. That's it. I'm calling it early. World champion right there. Oh, oh fantastic. There, yeah. there are a lot of races to go, but uh, yep. you know that, that's the typical race where we knew what was going to happen yep. before the start. Yeah. Remy wasn't and too far he, behind him, though. He wasn't he, too he far wasn't behind him, but did you see the mistakes run. he made all, all the way through? Yeah. He made he made a lot of unforced errors, as you call them in tennis. Yeah. 
Yeah. He made a lot. He, he almost came off a couple of times. Yes. Remy yeah, did. True. Whereas Who? Sam. Remy. 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 Uh, Remy. Yeah. But look, Edra, if you watch the race, uh, Sam was in the front. Remy oh, was, seemed, yeah. seemed to be arriving as soon as uh, Sam was informed that Remy was coming. Sam just went. He just more. kept controlling. Bit Why more. should he push more yep. and, and finish the tires? He just it was, was, a, it was, it was a, very, a, it's a very Marquez ride, wasn't it? Yeah, it was no, no. It wasn't easy. Easy. I mean, he was controlling, managing. He, yeah. had he didn't he do the control. fastest lap while he was way in front because that's what I was I again know. questioning. I'm like, if you're in front like that, how do you keep fast enough? How do you focus and all that kind of thing? But he was still getting faster, knowing that he yeah. had no one behind him. So well, they've got on the on the dashes, yeah, on the dashes they've mm. got lap timers, and so they they know the variation between the fastest lap and what they're doing for mm -hmm. each sector. So yep. they know those sector times. So he can see corner to corner if he's going faster than the fastest yep. sector that he's done previously. So I can kind of keep him in. Yeah. Exactly. He can keep gauging all of that as well. So, and yeah, and talking about Remy again, an amazing performance from, uh, from yes. our, man, our man Remy. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, as I say, that, that he will beat Sam this year, but it will be close. You can see the two of them are clearly going to be uh, going to be the favourites there. And I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you about Sam, but I think just because someone does one outstanding race at the start doesn't mean we're going to finish like that, as we know. Yeah, yeah agreed, agreed. No, no, but, of course not. Mm. Imagine there are still 18 races to go. Mm. So, you know, exactly. we, we, we can't sell the bear, like we say, <laughs> before hunting it, you know? Yeah. And you know I love right. Sam, so I'd love to see him win. But I'm just I'm I'm think it's going to get mixed up a bit because Remy, you know, yes, he made a lot of errors in that race, but he's so much faster on that bike. Mm. Oh yeah, for and sure. I, I like I I like very much. I think Jake did a good job. Oh my and god! You know who surprised me? Uh, me. Remy's teammate. Remy team. I was going to say the same. Ralph Fernandez. I yeah. love him. Oh, what a rookie ride! Fantastic. Wow. Wow. He was he and was. Sorry, he was no, doing no, that I, in Moto I, Three. He was like always on pole, but he just couldn't finish finish enough. What well, he sat in third for most of that Moto Two race, so mm. with a little bit more guidance. He's yeah, I, I'd like him. No, no, and I, uh, during the the practice session, we saw them working together a lot. You yes. know, look okay, yeah, if yeah. if Raúl did this race. Uh, he owes Remy probably 70% of that. <laughs> a lot of the teams Remy were basically... doing that. They were really helping each other out. It was good to see. Yeah, but but for me, I, I am sure that uh, Remy's father, Wayne, mm -hmm. the first thing he will tell him or has told him, hey, hang on. Okay, give With him that. a hand, but... Your yep. race. One hand. Now yes. enough. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So going to Jake, I think I saw he struggled after five laps and I noticed, and mm. then I saw the comments the next day that he was starting to tuck his arm in because he was getting a bit sore. And I saw people's yep. comments. I didn't see the actual footage, but as he went to sit down, they said he just had the look on his face was like heart wrenching, whether it was pain or whatever, but he managed to finish the race. Yeah, good on him. Uh, that's, that's an Finished amazing result. in a result. bloody like, good spot. Yes, yeah, so to finish seventh in in that race in in that condition, mm -hmm. that is absolutely fantastic, and that will hold him yeah, in good for this weekend as well. Is. Yeah, yeah, it is. He had to he had to test his. Uh, I wouldn't say broken, his destroyed wrist. Yeah, okay? yeah. So he, I think that. It will become better. Or we hope that on it after uh, race after See race, how it will he's recovered. Mm. Yep, um, indeed. How's Barry Beltis's arm? Oh God, yeah. Did you see that Manuel? Was I can't remember if that was in Q. I can't remember if it was in the free practice, but he pretty much has done. He broke his arm, his wrist, and he broke in two spots. It was a really nasty. That was that was horrendous. Nasty yeah. crash. Yep, yeah, as that Just happened, spat I, him. I it took him one Barry way. Barry ah, side, big guess. high side. Yeah. Yeah, he he, saw, he landed on his head, but then on his arm as well, didn't he? And yeah, as it happened, I was saying, yeah, that's a broken arm. It that's a concussion him. and a broken arm. And I think as the guys got to him, he just went. <laughs> like, but yeah, yeah could, I think I think move. it was broken in two spots. It's a pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. He's got right. he's got three elbows. I did say to um, my husband while we we're watching. I said, oh, I'm looking forward to hopefully this year not as many people fall off as last year. Like, remember when everyone first came? I shouldn't have said that. I'm so yeah, sorry. Exactly. Um, but last year, like, I remember we were talking because they'd had such a big gap because of the lockdown and everything, and people were spitting the dummy all over the place. Left, right, and center. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So, look, finally, just a quick one. 
Um, Moto three, your favorite rider, rider Andro Jaume Masia won that one. Can you? I see. Uh, yeah, but, but <laughs> <laughs> you still hate him. Um, I do. I know. He's he, still you know a what? It's, bitch. He's a little whinge and bitch, but this is his year. He's riding bloody awesome. But yeah. what fascinated me with Moto three, and please again correct me if I'm wrong, are all the bikes pretty much the same? Because yeah. watching that race. Every time they went on a straight, the positions of everyone, like Darren Binder, for example, he'd drop to 11th, then he'd be back up in third, and then they'd all mix up again. And it was just like, what is happening? Like, there was just of bees. It's freaking, it was so good to watch. But Darren is a bloody legend. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We we are all Darren this year, right? Oh, Oh, we are all in. He did the, he did the poll, didn't he, on Saturday? He was so excited. And then in the race, uh, very good. We are we are all done in this. He is exactly. not scared 100%. of anything. Like some of those gaps he was going through, and he's like bumping them, and he's just like, "There's a gap going for it." Didn't give yep. a shit. Yeah, good on him. You know, good. I I want to point you the new. Write down this name because he will be. The Does new it start with an A? Su- yes. With then an a- I, Izan Guevara. Oh, yeah, this name? guy. This guy is I Z A N. Izan Guevara is the name. Oh, I thought you meant yeah. someone else at first, but yes, he. Yep, yep. This guy is the new. Mm, is it Quartararo? The Aspar, the Aspar team. The new. Uh, it was his first uh, race. He mm-hmm. won everything, everything in Spain, like Quartararo won when he was young. Yep. So I haven't spoken with anybody who hasn't told me. Look. This is the guy. So keep an eye on him. Okay. Wow, geez, he looks young. I've just just brought a photo of him up. He's, he's, he's 16. He's, he's like 16. 12. Is he the one with braces? Yeah. yeah. He's a kid. I, co- I thought you meant a coster at first when you said, because he's right. another one. Uh, Acosta yeah. is all, yeah. look, there is a new generation that mm. are very good. Acosta is one of them. And who is the name? The one who, 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 crea- who crashed into this four. I really Acosta. like Toba too. Acosta, and there is another. This is a generation. Oh, the one that took out the three or four bikes. Yeah, yes. yeah. And this guy <laughs> is very good as well. This okay. guy, he is very good. He is a uh, in that? the Leopard team. So these guys, these three are extremely. Oh, Dennis Foggia. Riders. Foggia. Foggia. Is Dennis a, Foggia. Yeah, Foggia. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Um, Moto three, seriously, and I love watching Moto three because I, I think that's one definitely up there as with my favorite to watch because it's just yeah i love it mental yeah. but then you get to moto 2 and you go oh my god and there's our guys and they're starting to you know find their own and that and then you get to moto gp and you're just like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> indeed yeah now i'm a tatsuki suzuki fan as well in moto 3 i think he's fantastic oh, he had the rona he's getting better yeah he's getting better oh yeah no he's suffering look the guy i mean is artigas Artigas is the Artigas. good. Yep. Artigas is good. Uh, Guevara is very good. And yep. Acosta. These three guys mm-hmm. are top guys. You will nice. see them. I'm so excited you will for hear this about, year. Uh, of them. I oh, seriously, I, guys. I started listening again to our um, first episodes just to see what, and I understand everything you were talking about now. Even at the time, <laughs> I remember sitting here going, I don't know what they're what saying. The but again, just <laughs> seeing, I can't imagine my life without this now. I thank you very much. Beautiful. And then we're going to do it all again this weekend. Yes. So, Manuel, the we will see. Days, what, yeah, we will what, see what who doing? is going. Now, tomorrow, as I told you, I have an interview with Suzuki. Uh, I tried to speak with the people of Honda. Yep. And they said, no, we are not doing any comments till now. <laughs> Only when well, we finish on the podium, not when we finish eighth. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the last to close, I have to tell you that I have news that Marquez was eating his nails down to the elbow, watching the race. <laughs> he is absolutely mad. He wants to come back. Really? He is like, you know, like a tiger in in the room, you know? He feels like he's ready to go, does he? Yeah, and he saw the races, and I think he will be here. He will, he has to come to Doha come for the for second, second shot. Vaccine. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if he will go to the track or not, but it great. seems that he's really crazy and getting mad. Put him on the wild card in Moto3. <laughs> <laughs> not this again. <laughs> to train. Uh, to train, yeah. yeah. Um, prediction for next weekend. 
no prediction. We will see. Oh, come on. Uh, That's no, not the, fun. The, the, the thing is that. I think Morbidelli. I think Morbidelli is going to come good. Ducati has to win. This I is want Peko. I must. think Peko. I only saw Peko last year injured, so I think he's got a lot yep. to. I'm going with Peko. Yeah, no, I, I think as far as Ducatis go, I still think Miller, but I think Morbidelli is going to be up there as well. Yeah, the, the, the two guys who have to perform, who must perform, Miller, because mm-hmm. he, has, he has seen Zarco and uh, Bagnaia yeah. taking, yeah. taking his role. Extra mm-hmm. pressure. And in racing, if you don't, as soon as you get up from the throne, Immediately, somebody sits on it yep. <laughs> while it's warm. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to quickly say, because I last week um, asked people to let us know where they were listening from. Mm-hmm. All right. Quick shout outs. We've got Sandro in Canada. What's up? Hey, we've got Ruben. I don't know where, but Ruben. We've got Fernando from Washington, D.C. Rodrigo. Wow. In, yeah. Rodrigo in Copenhagen. Outstanding, Rodrigo in Copenhagen. Right. How you doing, mate? And I'm very sorry we haven't mentioned this guy for a while because I think he's equal number one fan with Andrew and Jillian is Yash in India. Yash, what's up, Yash. mate? We yeah. chat. Yeah. We pretty much chat all week, every week. Like he sends yep. me three little clips and he's like, if you check this out on MotoGP, and yeah, he's a bloody legend. So he's in hello, the MotoGP to all of you. fantasy team as well. In our yes, league. Yes. Anyone I've, Adela- I think, Hmm? No, no, I want to know where, from which part of India is because India oh. is like a continent. <laughs> Yash, yeah. let's, what part let's of India out. are you from? Um, I've started up know. a I started up a MotoGP fantasy league on MotoGP. Um, yep. Can people still join it? Of course they can. You can join it all through the year. All right, I'll put the code on our notes if anyone wants to jump in. Stick it in the notes. And you know you're going to beat me. <laughs> well, you know. Before we get going, Andrew, you got any more comments for the uh, for the for the viewers and the listeners? Oh, I could keep talking for hours, and I just jump on. Like we've got our um, YouTube followings jumped up, and we're getting more comments, which is fantastic. Please keep sharing it, message us, chuck us a photo, check out pictures on Instagram, and check out Pacino GP in Italian. Exactly. And- get yourself over to PacinoGP.com. Hit the uh, notification. Uh, oh. hit the- the bell oh. the like subscribe hey, i like that manuel on. that's brilliant <laughs> why like, not can can people buy the pacino gp masks on your website yeah no, no 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 i i expect to burn all these masks as soon as possible <laughs> <laughs> fantastic all right guys it's been absolutely right. amazing thank you we're, we're actually here in 2021 i am so pumped i'm so psyched we'll see you all again after the next uh, next race in la salle what is going to happen Peace out. Bye. (laughs) See you. Adios.